Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here, your Mentally Unstable host. Hope you guys are doing good out there. I'm doing just great. Now kids, don't try this at home. Remember, don't try this at home. <laughs> All right, social observations. That's the title of the video. And this video is going to be using real names. Now, I received an email from somebody named Chris, who is not mentally unstable. Although, Mr. Terry 3Gs, because anybody who disagrees with him or has some type of a comment uh, about what he's doing, how he's doing it, or wants to give him some type of advice, is kind of considered mentally unstable for doing so. So, Chris, like I said, he is not mentally unstable. Wrote me a very lengthy email a while back and kind of uh, explained his situation that he how he has caught in contact with uh, certain people and his experiences with Terry 3G. So let's go ahead and get into the reading of this email because the text may not be able you may not be able to see it on your phone or. Uh, depending what size monitor or anything that you're using to watch this video so I'm going to read it to you all right so let's get into this email from Chris well I started following the Ben Coombs YouTube channel about a year and a half ago I started watching the live streams on Sundays and Mondays last December I got to know Ben and his sister Amanda and found that we all went to high school together so that was cool that is kind of cool. Then I noticed on Monday night's sh show, Ben would have his co-host on for the live streams, Terry and Tom. As I got to know these guys better, I noticed Terry was a bit jealous on of new people that Ben and Tom liked. Then I noticed his terrible and sometimes inappropriate jokes that barely anyone laughed at yeah i've seen quite a few of those actually there was one that was towards uh amanda which was very inappropriate and the subject was not brought up by anybody but yet terry had to say something kind of you know pretty inappropriate then i was wondering why he is trying to lead the chat and direct everyone like some sort of head moderator totally laughable well here's the kicker on that one and in a hangout by Mama Goonie, which I do have a video of, um, yeah, he ended up uh, telling her that he wants to be head moderator, which is pretty sad because if you have nothing else to live for but being a moderator on YouTube for channels and or... Uh, looking at half-naked women and commenting to them on Twitter and other social media. Um, yeah, that's pretty sad. All right, so let's go back to the email. My son and I started asking the panel questions in a live chat, and Terry would get all high and mighty and seem annoyed at us for asking these normal guitar-related questions. He seems to know everything and anything yes that's because he looks everything up online i finally went to his youtube channel which mean his is terry 3g's and my jaw dropped his content was so fucking weird like a 12 year old he cannot play guitar worth a shit now see this is where uh, I don't really comment about other people's guitar playing because, you know, I really personally don't think my guitar playing is worth a shit either. But let's go back to the email. My son at 10 could play circles around him. He is 19 now. Anyways, we were shocked. We were shocked to say the least. I thought, oh my God, this can't be real. And why the fuck is Ben letting his, this loser on his channel? Loser meaning... Terry 3G's. It's going to hurt it. Well, I've watched Ben Coombs stuff. Ben Coombs not a bad guy. He's got some pretty decent content. He wouldn't need any type of moderators on his channel if Terry wasn't there. 
So basically, Terry is basically watching for any comments that has to do with him that are negative towards him, so he can delete them right away. If it wasn't for Terry being there, Ben wouldn't need any moderators at all. Back to the email. I could not believe this guy was acting like he knew a thing or two, and all he does is read shit off the internet. Bingo! So after time, I thought, I'd message Amanda Coombs, Ben's sister, to ask some questions. She basically gave me a reply of, yes, he is weird. He as in being Terry 3G's. And he acts like he needs a lot of attention, but he is just a lonely middle-aged guy who doesn't have much in life, and his mom... I won't say die, I'll say past, but she, he says die. Anyways, I think I just said it. Yeah, I did say it. Okay. And we should feel sorry for him. She agrees that he acts very immature, but he is harmless. And to be polite, that was last spring. So, Chris ended up contacting... Ben Coombs' sister, Amanda, had a nice little conversation with her about Terry. And Ben Coombs' sister, Amanda, basically says that, um, yes, he is weird. He is being Terry 3G's. And we all kind of know this. But the thing is, is people should not feel sorry for him because, in fact, a lot of you guys may remember, a lot of you guys may have seen uh, Terry 3G's did a lot of shit to himself, and one of the things was the whole, um, I'm the victim thing that he would play, uh, get himself involved in other people's or his own drama that was on YouTube, if you want to call it drama, arguments is what I like to call them, and kind of put his foot up his own ass by doing this and made himself look the way that he does. So this whole Terry 3G's all kind of new, um, what do you want to call it? Uh, I don't know, this act that he's playing right now. Now, there's some things that are behind this that are kind of maybe not strange. And you guys know the history and the story about me and Terry 3G's. You know, he calls everybody his best bud up until he doesn't get what he wants from them and then he doesn't like need them anymore so like in my case with terry 3g's he tried to take advantage of my generosity and when he found out that well you know i caught on to his little fucking game um yeah you're not mooching anything off of me anymore man so what did he do? Packed up his shit and kind of switched gears towards different people of the same community um, to try to leech off of them. All right, so let's get back to this email. Since then, I have been a guest on the channel a few times, and it was okay. Terry was being more agreeable and friendly. I think someone talked to him about it, not sure. More than likely, somebody probably did. Back to the email. I was still not comfortable with this guy and was keeping an eye on him for that period on. Then I saw your videos and I saw other videos from other people with the same Terry issues. I knew I wasn't the only one, thank God. No, you're not the only one. Then I saw his other social media accounts, Pathetic Beyond Words. Yes, and I will kind of show a little bit of more of updates on that later. Yes, it is very pathetic. You know, for a lonely old guy, or middle-aged guy, somewhat middle-aged, whatever you want to call him, because I'm older than he is, um, yeah, it is pretty pathetic to kind of see a grown person with some of the words that he has said on YouTube, on other YouTube channels that kind of puts him in that creepy, you know, kind of weird stay away from. So it's like, you know, well, I'll get into that later on because I saw something that somebody else sent me that, uh, well, kind of 
go on to that discussion. So let's get back to the email. So Chris goes on and says, he is delusional, obviously. And just for the record, he's probably never had a woman that he didn't pay for. Well, Chris, that one I have to argue with you about because you have to have money in order to pay for anything, right? And Terry 3G's little history that he's been showing on Twitter, uh, begging for money, well, yeah, he ain't got any. So, back to the email. I guess my issue is that I am part of this guitar community that he is in infiltrating, and now I feel I have to leave the channel if they choose to continue to associate with him and allow him to be a moderator. Yeah, that's kind of what I did, because he ended up posting a little bit of comment about myself in the side chat uh, on Ben Coombs Hangout, uh, because I was so helping Ben Coombs support him on his channel, and uh, was basically accused of basically just giving money uh, for him to like me, I guess, maybe, I think that's what it was. It's in one of my, the comments in one of my videos, but uh, anyways. I have been lurking and watching the Canucks with Guitars live stream for the past couple of weeks, but not participating in the chat. People are asking where I am, but I'm not responding, as I do not know how to tell them how I feel about the situation. Terry needs major help beyond any of our therapy skills. And I don't know why the other channels, channel members don't see it. I like some of those people, but he is running it, ruining, sorry, ruining it for me. And it sucks because I think a lot of these members are keeping their mouth shut as to not dispute the herd or their damn creeps themselves enabling his this asshole anything i can do to help let me know your videos are informal and funny sorry for this being a long rant but it's been Brewing for months. Cheers, sincerely, Chris. Chris, there is no need to apologize for your email. In fact, uh, there is a lot of other people out there who feel the same way as you do. In fact, I have received several emails and comments that are on my channel that are visible to see. The emails, not so much because some of these people kind of wanted to stay anonymous as far as getting involved in what some people will call drama, which eh, maybe it is, but... I don't know. I call it fact because everything that I've been showing, everything that I've been posting has been coming from the source itself. So if there's any videos of him speaking, well, that came from him. Any videos of Terry 3G's Twitter account, well, that came from him as well. So there are no lying, no lies, no, no making this shit up. It's out there. And like I've said before, it is the gift that keeps on giving. Son of a bitch still here! Look, he go again! You're going now! You're here for an hour! Why you here for an hour? Now, I can't say too much about weight, because I'm kind of a big guy myself, but I don't lie about how much I weigh. Alright, so I'm six feet tall. Let's check out my weight. We'll zero that puppy out. And let's get on the scale. 249.6. Eh, I can lose a little bit. I think Terry 3G's got his kilograms and pounds mixed up. Why else would he have on his wish list a scale that can go up to 400 pounds? So on to a little bit of a more serious problem. Because Canada has having a problem of Lyme disease going around. So, Terry, in his stupid humor, says, So bring Corona to have a little Lyme? That's supposed to be funny when there's a little bit of a problem going on? So this is one of the 
girls slash women that Terry follows on Twitter because, well, let's just say that sometimes she has very little clothes on. Anyways, so the chick says, wearing shorts is so amazing I forgot what my legs look like. So this is supposed to be a joke. Oh my God, you have pretzels for legs? I kind of would take that as an insult if I was her. And here is another so-called example. Same woman, should I get bangs? Terry's reply is, glad I didn't read this as, should I get banged? Some more of his unnecessary, stupid humor. Ah, so the old Terry and his Twitter account are starting to come back to the way things were. Although this chick is a little bit on the older side than what was used to being seen. Anyways, I don't mind looking at a beautiful woman. Hell, who doesn't? But I wouldn't be, I don't know, making these comments. I wouldn't be really saying too much of anything to these women because these women are all in for something. Your credit card number. So here I thought this was quite funny. Here is Terry 3G's crying again, but this time to somebody else, about Piapples stalking him. Well, wait a minute. What is, really, what is a Piapple? You know, is this some type of new language? Is it a Canadian word for people? Because it seems like that's what he's replacing uh, as far as replacing the word people with Piapples. You know, it, somebody tell me what the hell this is. So he's saying that P. Apples are stalking him, posting videos trying to say that he's doing some sick things. Well, I got to tell you, no, they're basically copying stuff that they have seen, found, uh, or noticed about you that you have said, you have done, and you have shown. So it's not really trying to make you look like a sick person. Um, you did it to yourself. So, again, you know, he says that he re reports these things uh, to YouTube, again, with the crying. Wee, wee, wee. Does YouTube listen? No. Why should they? You're nobody. They're never going to do anything for you. People are not doing anything wrong. They're simply posting up things about you that you posted about yourself. Simple as that. Now, as far as the form of the way that they're posting it, yes, that makes you look bad. But, again, this is something that you put up, something you post, something you showed, and something you said. Well, it's a pleasure to be here because I was just in Las Vegas, so I need the money. <laughs> I lost a lot of money. I really did. I mean, I get them back at the buffet, don't get me wrong. $9.95, all you can eat. We'll see who wins this friggin' handout, won't we? I do believe I have blackjack. I was at the prime rib counter going, hit me again. The buffet manager was horrified. You should have seen him. He looked like a deer caught in the headlights. Get the primer back in the kitchen. <laughs> Finally, just, he just gave me my money back. Here's your thousand. Get out! <laughs> Actually, they have a buffet in Las Vegas. It's called the Oz Buffet. It's the Wizard of Oz thing. And it's a buffet. You walk up and it's the Emerald City. And it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. I ran to it. Yeah, out of the witcher, out of the doctor, out of the night. Step into the sun, step into the light. Fine ribs and pork chops and scampi, oh my. Fine ribs and pork chops and scampi, oh my. You know, I talk about buffets, not because I'm a big guy. No, I'm actually writing a book, Around the World in 80 Buffets. <laughs> And in my research, I found that there are some foods that shouldn't be all you can eat. Like Chinese food shouldn't be all you can eat because you get hungry again. I don't know what it is. They put something in it. They must. 
because I order takeout, they're always real happy. Oh, he's gonna be back. <laughs> I give that big boy one hour. Because <laughs> you do get hungry again. What is it, too? And you go from full to starving. There's nothing in between. You go from, oh my God, I can't believe I ate all that chow mein. Hey, look, they brought egg rolls. <laughs> so I went to this Chinese all-you-can-eat buffet, and while the owner, he got pissed. I mean, he was rude, though. He'd come out every hour. Son of a bitch still here. <laughs> Look, he go again. <laughs> he started screaming at me. You're gone now. You're here for an hour. Why you're here for an hour? You will not come here anymore. Why you have spare rib? You're so big! <laughs> Eat vegetable! <laughs> Eat broccoli! <laughs> you scare my wife! <laughs> Love Chinese food shouldn't be all you can eat. Now, Japanese food. For the book, I went to an all-you-can-eat sushi place. Mmm. <laughs> All the raw stuff I can eat, huh? It was $22.95. $22.95 for raw fish. $22.95, you throw this on the grill. <laughs> $22.95, I can't eat a dollar's worth. I brought a seal. <laughs> I put him right under the table. Or, or, Another plate, please. That seal ate buckets full. <laughs> the owner thought I was eating it all, though. Got yelled at again. <laughs> this guy scared me, though. He, he reminded me of Lord Toronaga from Shogun. <laughs> hey, you! Big boy! Big boy, come here! You eat like free! That's you eat like free willy. <laughs> <laughs>